welcome to another episode of Kirsty Knits and Sews podcast. My name is Kirsty. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Kirsty Knits and Sews. And I like knitting and sewing. I have a little bit of both to show you here today. I actually have a lot to show you. It's been about three weeks since the last podcast, so there's been a lot of knitting going on. Um, before we jump into knitting, I will just show you. I have done some sewing. The first one that I finished is this little grandpa cardigan. It is a pattern by Brindle and Twig. Um, I made it for my almost one year old daughter. I finished most of the sewing a while ago and just had to add the buttons. So I did that recently and then a matching one for my son. All the fabric I got from Black Wattle not black bottle. I'll put it down here, I can't remember. But it's all from Wattle Hill Fabric. <laughs> it's all from Australia. The buttons I got from a local Tasman Fairview here. Um, I don't know if anyone cares. I did my nails yesterday. Yay! It was pretty exciting to have a chance to do my nails. Yeah. Just nail polish. Did it myself. Um, and I have done, when I did those, I also made two pairs of pants, one pyjamas and one tracksuit pants. Yay! I do like sewing, but I've said before, I'm doing a much more knitting at the moment. I find it a bit easier to look after toddlers and babies while I'm knitting than while I'm sewing. Um, the attention, the ability to put it down quickly is helpful. Um... Yeah, I live here in Poland at the moment and I ha live with my husband and my two children who are three and one. Well, will be one on Saturday. Yay! So, welcome. Um, I have really just jumped on in, so let's go continue with finished objects that are knitting. Uh, the first next finished object, the first knitted finished object is this here and this is the empower people brioche bandana um, if you watched one of the last two episodes you'll know that I had a look at that beautiful I had a fisherman's rib cow that I was doing uh, that was going to be more of an infinity scarf but it was knitted in the round and I did not like it. I was not enjoying knitting it. I loved the yarn, but it just really didn't show off the yarn. Um, but I wear a lot of navy, and it was a navy yarn, and so I really wanted a navy cow. Well, I had seen the crazy sock lady do a brioche bandana in an old episode of hers, a long, long time ago. Um... But I was like, maybe I can do a brioche bandana cowl instead. But then when I started looking at the pattern for that, I saw this pattern, which was a free one, and I liked the style a little bit better, so I did this instead. Uh, I will tell you, I will put all of the links to my Ravelry project pages down below. So if you're interested in something that I've made or a pattern that I'm making, Click on the link to the project and it will take you to the Ravelry page which will have patterns linked where there are patterns. Um, if there's yarn, dyes or anything like that I will put it down below in the description box. So you're covered. If you have any questions that I haven't answered in the podcast or down below or in my Ravelry pages, just put a comment and I'll ask and I'll answer. Um, so this one, the yarn I used, so I did end up using the same navy yarn that I was using previously but I also pulled another one from my stash to go with it and I just love the look which means I can wear it either way it is reversible and I can have a more navy scarf or I can, or a cowl or I can have a brighter cowl um the yarn is beautiful. This is black wattle yarn and fibre yarn. The 
got to get this right. The lighter blue is called Lone Light and it is their wattle base, which is 100% alpaca. The navy is called Into the Darkness and that is their Kumzea base, which is an alpaca cashmere silk, but I don't remember percentages. Um, so they are both delightfully soft and squishy. I bought them at the same time when I was living in Australia with the plan to make a cowl out of the blue and possibly a cowl out of the lone light, but I hadn't planned to put them together. When I saw them together when they arrived, I loved them together, but I still went with my original plan. And maybe that's why I ended up frogging it, I think three times <laughs> I frogged it. Um, but it's done. I love it. Once I finally got this pattern, the whole thing took six days to knit. Like it was so quick once I knew what I wanted. And that wasn't just this knitting, it was other knitting as well. But once I was happy with it, done, finished. Um, so yeah, I can wear that around at the moment. Uh, I will wear it a lot more when it gets cold again. We're just coming into the warmer part of spring, almost summer. It's nice weather. All right. So I didn't say before, I have five finished objects to take you through today. So that was the first one. The second one I'm actually not going to take you through today. That was a test knit for Comfort Zone Knits. And it is being released, I believe, in August. So when it's released, I will take you through the knit here. I will tell you that I love it. And I need to take proper photos to send to Comfort Zone Knits. But I keep wearing it anyway before I've properly <laughs> photographed it. It's so comfortable. And I'm considering making a second one. So I'll see how that goes. But it is a great knit. Um... The third one I actually don't have here with me, so I'll put a photo up here. These are socks that were gifts and they are on the way to their recipient. Um, these are vanilla socks on Magic Loop pattern by the Crazy Sock Lady. And I did it on 2.25mm Chow Goo Circulars, 100cm, 40 inches. Um, now these socks I did with Zabba Ball Crazy fingering. It was my first time using that yarn and I love the effect, the gradient look. Um, it was the Tropical Fish colorway, but it was, in my opinion, a light fingering. And so I started them on 25 millimeter needles, which is what I often do for my tension, what I often do um, the Crazy Sock Lady vanilla socks on. Um, the pattern calls for 2.25, but I often do 2.5 millimeter. But I started it and they were just way too loose and so like I said on a previous episode I frogged that started on 2.25 much happier with the finished fabric and fit of the socks um yeah sometimes you've got to do that actually I frogged another pattern another pair of socks since the last time I was on here and that was also because I'd started it in a 2.25 millimeter and the yarn was thicker than I liked, so I went up to a 2.5 millimeter. I do that if I'm not happy with the project, I'll just frog it, start again. I much prefer knitting it when I when it's the gauge feels right, basically. And the finished project I'm always happy with when I've frogged and restarted. Um, so that's those socks. Then I had, now this next one, sorry about the crinkling, is this. It is a bag bag. Yes, it is already being used. This, um, was a pattern. I don't have it written down. I will put it down here. <laughs> created the pattern and what it is called. It's a free pattern on a blog um, that I got off Ravelry. So the link I found on Ravelry and again, project page will be linked below. Um, this one, I have been wanting a bag bag probably the last seven months since I moved into this house. And I finally sat down and crocheted one and it only took 
maybe two hours, maybe an hour. It was a very quick knit. I not oh, crochet, crochet. I did 12 ply rustic yarn by Bendigo Woolen Mills, which is an Australian yarn maker. And it used 73 grams of a 12 ply. So if you went down a ply, you could use less or more. And the pattern just says do as many repeats of the pattern as you like. So I was happy with that. Perfect size, it hangs in our laundry slash bathroom and collects our bags. And the final finished object yarn wise is this jumper. Isn't that sweet? This one I ooh, looks like I'm wearing it. This one I made for my almost one year old. It is using leftover yarn, Sierra 8 ply from Patterns Australia, um, from a jumper that I showed in my last podcast, which was a full adult size jumper. So I believe they were 150 gram balls and I had four of them. And so I had enough to do, it's an acrylic wool blend. Um, so I had enough to do the full adult jumper and then this and I had just a few, maybe 60 grams of the sleeve colorway left. So I, the jumper, the adult jumper was striping two different colorways. This that you can see here is one of the colorways that I did on the adult jumper and that is the second colorway. So for the adult jumper, I had them striping the different colorways. For this one, I didn't want to tie in ends. I didn't want to carry yarn. I just wanted to knit. So I just knit the body in the first colourway and the sleeves in the second. Very happy with how it worked out. The pattern is the Blue August by Drops. It's a Drops free pattern. Now, this is the second time I've made it. The first time I made it has become my son's favourite jumper. He will wear it as much as he wants. Um, Anytime I want him to wear a jumper, if he doesn't want to, I'll bring this one out and he'll put it on. Um, he really likes it, so I did the same pattern. It's just a stocking stitch on the front and a moss stitch on the sleeves. It looks like a bit of a slip stitch design in this yarn, but it is actually just a moss stitch. Um, I love the way that it works up in the stripy variegated yarn. Um, but the pattern, I think the smallest size is two to three. Now my daughter's almost one and she's not big for her age, slightly above average, but not big. Um, so I looked at the pattern and I looked at the difference between every size and I just figured out what that was for one size smaller. Um, if I did it again, I would have, well, if I had more yarn, I would have made the body longer um as it is it will fit her and she'll wear it and it will fit her for a while and i think i'm going to make another one of these for my son the pattern is not intuitive i the first time i did it i hadn't done a huge amount of garment knitting and i found it very painful to read this time i actually reformatted the pattern so that i could do it easier and i still found it annoying so I'm going to probably reformat the pattern again so I have a copy that I am happy to sit down and pick up and work with. Uh, it is a lot more work, especially if I'm going to do that for every size, but I think it'll be worth it because it does seem like it's a pattern I'm going to keep coming back to. So just a warning, if you want to do the pattern, I did find it very unintuitive, but I love the pattern. I love the finished garment. So. Go figure. All right, so that's my five finished objects. I did frog two since the last podcast, the fisherman rib cow that I mentioned, and the socks that were too tight on the 2.25 millimeter needles. And <clears throat> so now we're into whips. Now I want to let you know. I did the Clearing for Camp 2022 with the Crazy Sock Lady and I got rid of a whole bunch of whips. 
us there are five that are finished um two that were frogged and i got down to i think it was five left and then some sock samples started and i cast on six new whips seven socks in one day i cast on seven 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 <laughs> Um, one of them was a two at a time, thus there's six whips, seven socks. Um, but I will take you through all of my whips. I'll start with the ones that I already had, and then I'll go into my new cast-ons, if I can figure out which one's which. Um, so, the first one I have written down are my turtle, sea turtle reef socks. Now these ones are not eligible for the crazy sock camp. Crazy Sock Camp, Summer Sock Camp, hosted by the Crazy Sock Lady, um, because these were started pre-camp and whips are not allowed. Um, I will probably still work on them throughout summer because these are my practice for continental knitting. Um, so quickly, first of all, it is, again, the vanilla sock by the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, I'm doing it on 2.25 millimeter, nine inch circular chowdrews. Um, that's why they're so tiny, 9 inch circular. And the yarn is Sea Turtle Reef by Maximu Yarns on his sock base. And I love it. You can see I finished the heel turn and the gusset and now I'm just knitting the foot. So that's a nice place to be when I'm learning a new way of knitting. Um, love the yarn. Soft, beautiful. I love the colours and the way that it works out. It's just love it. Um, there's not really much else to say. I am an English knitter. I knit by throwing with my right hand and I wanted to learn continental. And so I decided why not learn with a sock? To be fair, this would have been easier. But I'm learning with the sock and I've done half a sock and I've got another full sock to do before I move on to something else. I am wanting to do the sea glass sweater, which is a one by one colour, colour work. So knit one with this colour, knit one with this colour. And when I do colour work, I usually do continental with my left hand and English throwing with my right hand. And that's how I do colour work. So wanting to get better at continental is for a speed thing because that can be quicker if you're competent at it but also to make color work easier <sighs> okay my next one this was for the crazy cabled sweater knit along also hosted by the crazy sock lady this time with sock witchery it's not going to be finished um i have had lots of bursts of mojo on this one I cast it on in January because that's when the um, knit along started. So I've been doing it for five months. It is a cable sweater. So that takes a lot more time than a stocking stitch sweater. It takes a lot more focus. But also I was doing it with yarn that I knew I would run out of. And so I ordered more and it is on its way from Australia. It has arrived in Warsaw. It is sitting there waiting to go through customs so it can come here. And I just don't think it's going to arrive today or tomorrow because the knit along finishes tomorrow. And <laughs> I'm close, but I'm not close enough to actually finish this by tomorrow, even if I had the yarn, unless I was going to do nothing else today or tomorrow. And that's just not going to happen. I have two kids. I cannot knit nonstop for two days in the middle of the week. If nothing else, I have a pile of laundry that is overflowing the basket and needs folding and putting away. My kids like playing. It's not going to work. Anyway, so I'll show you where I'm up to. I'll show you the progress that I've made since last time. Um, first of all, if you haven't seen it before, this is the back. So the front will be a very similar look, size to the back. It is a little bit different with decreases. I think it finishes slightly less high in the collar. 
Um, and then I think it's a seam. Yeah, so all these stitches up here are live. So it's a seam, put it together, pick up stitches around the arm and finish knitting the neck pattern. Um, I should say, the pattern is a pattern spree pattern called Honeycomb Aran. You can see the honeycomb design in the middle. Um, I'm knitting it on five millimeter needles, just as the pattern says. I'm using Addy Circulars. I really like Addy Circulars. Addy Circulars aren't as pointy as Chow Goo, and I am doing it cableless, cable needleless. So it's cable. You can see all the cables in there, but I'm not actually using a cable needle at all to knit this one. I am only using the two circular needles. Um, I'm following a tutorial from the knitting magazine, which I'll also link below if anyone is interested in checking it out. Um, I find it more relaxing and quicker to not have the third thing to play with while I focus on, be distracted by. I don't like having a cable needle. I like being able to just hold the two needles and go. Um, but that being said, Addie's, the tips aren't as pointy for not using a cable needle. It probably would have been easier to do it with a chow goo, something that has a pointy and needle tip. Um, but I mean, I've done both sleeves, I've done the back and partway through the front. I'm not concerned about ease of it because I have just gotten used to it. This is one of the sleeves. a bit crinkled from being chucked in a bag but there you go that's one of the sleeves so I've got two of them finished I have the back finished and then this is where I'm up to on the front um, this down here is where I was up to three weeks ago at the last podcast so I have done a fair bit of progress but I need five of these before I start doing the decreasing for the arm and I'm only three in. Um, it takes time. It's much slower than doing stocking stitch or something. So it's just not gonna happen by tomorrow. And I made that decision. I kind of knew. I kept working on it a bit, even worked on it a bit last night after I did my nails, but I just kind of knew that it wasn't gonna happen. And so I wasn't pushing it. I didn't stay up late. I'm not going to do probably any of it today. Whenever the yarn gets here, I will pick it up and keep working on it. But I have other priorities at the moment. The main thing being, summer sock camp has started and I have six, six pairs of socks that I'm wanting to finish in a couple of weeks so that I can send them off as gifts. So that is got to be my priority at the moment. Oh, I should say the yarn. Beautiful yarn. I'll see if I can find a tag for you. It is Bendigo Woolen Mills. Here we go. Luxury in cream. Um, that's not going to focus properly. It is the 10 ply. This is 100% wool. It is machine washable which I really like for jumpers. Um, and 200 grams is about 300 meters. So shade 302, if anyone is interested. I love Bendigo Woolen Mills for quality and for price. They are, I think, direct to the public wholesale model in Australia. Um, so when I was in Australia, if I was looking to make a sweater, I often looked there first. If they had colours that I liked, I would buy them. They are wool. Occasionally bamboo, um, but oh, wool, cotton, bamboo, I believe are their normal ones. And they have had tweed and things like that. But I love it. So if you're looking for natural fibres in, in Australia, check it out. They do ship internationally. I don't know price-wise, haven't looked into that. So that's that. Now, the next one that I have, um, I did not have last time I was here. And that is saying something. 
wow, I really did get rid of pretty much all of my projects and then cast on some new ones. So this next one is the Bits and Bobs Blanket by Hey Someone. Again, I'll pop it down here. I should know these things. Um, this is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. I have been looking at it and eyeing it off for a long time and I just didn't have any scraps to do it with. It is a four ply held double and I accidentally, well, no, I deliberately bought eight balls of a four ply yarn to make myself the Stria cardigan by Dre Renee Knits. But it was not my colour. And then I was deciding, do I double what I had bought to buy, to make something for my husband? Like buy the same amount again? Or do I do the Bits and Bobs blanket? And the Bits and Bobs blanket had my heart. I knew I wanted to do it. I had yarn sitting there. I'm still going to have to buy another few balls, but most of it will be able to be done with what I have. So I'll show you the yarn first that I'm holding double. This is the colour. It's a cool grey and it is Easy Care Merino. 100% wool. It is mule sing free. Colour 4 and if I can find it, 50 grams, approximately 185 metres. So I had 8 balls of this to make myself the Strayer cardigan and so I think I'll need another 3 balls to make this blanket. It's not the worst colour, but it is a cool grey. And I don't wear cool greys. I thought I was getting more of a warm grey or a slightly browny grey, but the, I think the, I bought it from Hobby, and I think what I figured out is that Photos that they have on Hobby are pretty accurate. The paint dots that they have that you're clicking on to look at the photo are not very accurate. So I looked at the paint dot and it was about the colour I wanted and I looked at the photo and I was like, which one is accurate? So I went with the paint dot because the photo that looked accurate, they were out of stock. So I had a gamble, I lost, I get the blanket that I wanted to make. So this is all just being stored in this little wire basket that sits next to my knitting and this is what I have done so far. I'm halfway through a row so I can't even hold the whole thing out but there you go. Now you can see that there are a couple of bigger chunks. I am just knitting what I've got and finishing it up. You can also see down here this tiny little stripe of blue that starts there and runs across and stops there. That's a tiny scrap. So you can see I'm using big scraps and tiny, tiny scraps. Um, that's the only one that hasn't made it to a full line yet. The rest of them have made it to at least one full across. Um, I have a few of these baskets in my crafting area. I have one for four ply sock yarn, I have one for four ply knot sock yarn, I have one for eight ply sock yarn and one for eight ply knot sock yarn. And well, I should say for not four ply knot sock yarn. So basically everything else. <laughs> it has the 12 ply, it has the 10 ply, it has the 5 ply. Anything that isn't four ply goes into, well no, four ply. Sorry, five ply does come in here if it's not sock yarn. Um, this pink one here was a sport weight, five ply. Um, so yeah, I've got four ply sock, eight ply sock, four and five ply not sock, everything else not sock. And the everything else not sock will be used to make the sea glass sweater. The four ply not sock is being used to make this bits and bobs blanket. I may end up, haven't decided yet, I may end up using sock yarn in this blanket. You can use sock yarn, I know a lot of people who use sock yarn, but I haven't yet because I know I will use sock yarn to make socks. 
If I have scraps of sock yarn, I use them for heel toes cuffs, I use them for stripes. I really want to make scrappy socks because I haven't, I've done one scrappy sock pair, but I want to do stripy scrappy socks. And so that's waiting in that pile. This pile, I had nothing else that I would use them for. So I'm using them first for this blanket. And then when I run out, which will be soon, I'll have to decide whether I go into the sock stash. Um, this is fun. I'm using everything and anything. Um, this is 100% wool, crepe, I'm not sure what. I've got that little bit of um, Kinsaya from Black Wattle yarn. Um, 100% wool from a shawl that I made for my brother-in-law. 100% wool that I used in making an advent calendar for my sister. Some leftovers from a jumper I made for my son. Some, this is polyester, this blue one here. 100% polyester that I used to make a tea cozy or two. And then this is a merino singles from Viria, which is my favorite one in the blanket so far. I absolutely love this section and the way that the pink and the teal pop and the tiny little bits of purple. That's called jellyfish number five, if anyone's interested from Viri Yarns. Viri Yarns. Um, but yeah, very addictive to knit, very squishy. I'm looking forward to snuggling under it next winter. And I just I haven't wanted to put it down. I have, but I picked it up again Scrappy Sunday and it was a beautiful day. So that just sits there. I will probably eventually, yeah, I'll see how I go. I might move it to just a Scrappy Sunday knit, but at the moment I'm enjoying it too much. All right, so that is all the whips I had. There you go, I had four. Except for the crochet blanket, which is upstairs that I haven't actually pulled out for a long time. So I had four whips before summer sock camp started. And then I had a calf one day with my sister. And it was lovely. She lives in Australia. Her name is Melinda. She is Melinda Knits and Sews on Instagram. And I believe on Rubbery. And cast on all the socks. So I'm just going to take you through them quickly. They are all the vanilla socks on Magic Loop by the Crazy Sock Lady pattern. They're not all done Magic Loop, so I am adjusting the pattern as I need to for the type of knitting I'm doing. Crazy, uh, Summer Sock Camp is split up into, they're called cabins, but basically the way that you knit. So I generally knit Magic Loop, which means I would put my socks into Magic Loop. But I'm also doing a couple of other ones which will go into the wild card cabin. I don't have any DPNs at the moment and the only 9 inch circulars I have are on a pair of socks that aren't eligible. So I'll probably be split between Magic Loop and wild card cabin for Summer Sock Camp. So they're all vanilla socks on Magic Loop and I will just show you quickly what they all are. This one is knit on Addy Circulars. I'll show you this. This is what it looks like. Addy Circulars come in these little packets. 80 centimeters, 2.5 millimeter is what these ones are. And the yarn is Opal Black Dragon 2 Fantasy Island. It is a 75-25. and is a variegated stripey yeah it's so cool my brother-in-law really likes continuity so what i thought with him was i will make him opal socks every time i make him socks they'll be opal and i'll do the same pattern same everything so that he has consistency with the feel even though the colors will be different and this is how it is knitting up so far, oh, get untangled. There we go. So it is quite nice. I'm actually not sure. This feels 
a little looser than I wanted as well. And so I'm trying to figure out whether it's loose enough that I need to frog it and do it on 2.25s like the last ones. And I don't know, the yarn itself doesn't feel as thin as the other, but it is knitting up thin. So I don't know whether I need to change my tension slightly or if I need to frog it and redo it. I'm going to compare it to a few other ones that I have here and decide before I go any further. Um, yeah, but because this is, if you can see that there, that it's um, the variegated twisted two colours, that is similar to what the last one that I frogged because it was too loose was. And so I'm wondering if it's something about the way that it's twisted together makes it a thinner feel. Haven't decided yet, but I've been working on the other ones and then I'll come back and decide. That does look quite large. Anyway, so that one will probably be frogged and restarted as well. Yay! Um, so it is opal yarn. I don't think I showed you the label, I didn't read it out. Black Dragon 2 Fantasy Island. 100 grams, 425 meters. So that should give me an idea that it is a bit thinner. Um, and that all my bags I made myself. So this is just in a little bag pattern by Zeriano, which I can link below as well. These next ones will be in the wildcard cabin. These are the ones that I have worked most on, and these are also the ones that I frogged before Summer Soft Camp started and restarted after. Um, I've just this morning, I was watching Stranger Things and finished the heel flap and turn. So you can see heel flap there, heel turn. I've just picked up all the stitches for the gusset and I'm starting to do that. Um, so these ones I'm doing on 2.5 millimeter Addy Flexi Flip. Sorry about the glare. I picked these up at the mustard tree, maybe. It was, I'll see if I can find it online and link it below. It was a small knitting and sewing shop in Milton, down on the south coast of New South Wales. I went away for a weekend with my sister. We both bought some yarn and some Addy Flexi Flips. Um, I have not actually finished a pair of socks on these. I have attempted the same sock twice and I wasn't a huge fan of the way it was working up. Um, but I was trying to do a patterned sock with it. And it takes a while to get used to a new way of new needles and new way of holding things. So doing a patterned sock was not a good idea. Doing vanilla sock has been working much better. This is vanilla with a patterned yarn um, and it's working much better and much more comfortable and I will probably do more with Addies now that I am more comfortable with it. This is another opal and this is Frechton. and this is what the yarn looks like. Sorry a bit messy. Um, so you can see some blue greys, some lighter colours, some darker colours, and it just knits up. Lovely. So these ones I'm much happier with the gauge having moved up to a 2.5. When I was doing the 2.25 it just felt so dense and I was not enjoying knitting them at all. So now they're a good easy knit, which is exactly what you want sock knitting to be. Alright. Next, a lot of these I have not done much on at all. So these ones are on my Chowvu 2.25 millimeter, 80 centimeter circulars. Yeah, 32 inch. And this is, oh there it is. This is Zowable Crazy. And this is number 247. It is behind here, I can tell you. 75% superwash, 25% nylon. And this is the colour. Oh, sorry. 
sorry, it's found a flexi flip. So I'm going to put back, that's what they look like by the way, flexi flips. So it's just two needles with a very short cable and they have one sharper point and one duller point. So you can use your preference. I use the sharper point every time. It's easier. Um, okay, so this is what the Zabba Ball Crazy looks like. We've got some blue, some more purple, some mustardy colours, but all quite deep. I really like this. And this is all I have got done so far. Just part of the cuff. Just a small little amount. Um, like I said, I cast on a lot at the same time because I wanted them started. And now I'm working through and adding to them. All right. Uh, sorry about that. I had a quick break um, to pick up my son from preschool and have lunch as a family. And now I'm back. Hi. And today I'm drinking some iced tea. It's fused iced tea, peach, and hibiscus flavor, I believe. So. This next pair of socks, I'm doing two at a time. This is the yarn. It is Maximu Yarns Mariana Trench on their sock. I'm not sure. They have a high twist and a soft sock, I believe. From the feel, I would say it's a soft sock, but I cannot remember and the tag is somewhere else. Um, oh, so this one is another pair that I've frogged, but yeah. So this is, I said, Mariana Trench colorway. And this is all I have done. So like I said, it is doing them two at a time. So you can see there are two different pairs there. One, two, they both have five stitches, five rounds, four rounds. Newbie tiny stuff, four rounds each um, so far. I haven't worked on these since I cast them on because I um two at a time socks the yarn can get tangled and so I want to be doing something like watching TV something where I can easily keep track of how tangled the yarn gets rather than taking them on buses and out with me so I haven't worked on these ones yet um and for these, I followed the two at a time tutorial by Magic Sock Lady. So I'll link that below as well. Um, I think she does, she knits the entire cuff and then puts them onto like DPNs or different needles to hold them. And then once both cuffs are entirely done, she puts them back on and knits the rest two at a time. Um, I did four rounds. So the cuffs on them four rounds rather than the entire cuff because I don't mind doing the cuff two at a time. But like she says in her tutorial, doing the cast on and actually getting that initial couple of rounds, it's just, I mean, you don't want the yarn to twist and you don't want big ladders. And so I'm totally with her that it's not worth doing that two at a time. But after four rounds, I'm quite comfortable um, and I don't mind it. And this way I could get them both back on the needles without having to wait until they were both fully cuffed. Um, like I said, I make all of my bags myself. Um, I've been sewing about as long as I've been knitting, but I did a lot more sewing for many years than I did knitting. So I'm yeah, pretty good at sewing. So two more whips and then whips will be finished. So this next one is another, um, Zawa Ball crazy. This one is colour number um, 11532428 and it is, I'm doing it on 40 inch 100 centimetres. So when I'm doing Magic Loop I use either 40 inch 100 centimetres or 32 inch 80 centimetre needles. I can do it 24 inch 60 centimetres but it's too small to be comfortable for Magic Loop. So if I'm using, like I'm doing a sleeve and I don't have needles 
in that size in the bigger pack in the bigger length I will do small um, but generally I want 80 or 100 centimeter 32 or 40 inches bigger than that and it's just a bit cumbersome as well so they're my two favorites and so what I did for, <laughs> for summer stock camp is I actually just went through my needles picked out all of my needles that were 2.25 or 2.5 millimeter and a 3.25 that I'll do some DKs with but I haven't cast them on yet um, and then I looked at the socks that I wanted to knit and all of the ones that I needed to knit first I cast on and that used almost all of my needles I will go back once I finish these and cast on other socks that will be for me some shorties some more colorful ones you can see like this is the next color grays there's a lot of very like beautiful like for gray that's actually very nice to have all of those different shades and variations and it will be a gradient but they are a little bit boring i have bright colors that i want to knit with um but like i said i'm getting presents done first and i'm doing some presents for some men who like more neutral colors and i have to say it is nice to be knitting like i like knitting and i like knitting with yarn and i like seeing how different yarns knit up so i have no problem knitting with more neutral colors but it's definitely not what i would reach for for something like summer sock camp so i'm knitting these up these ones so the cuff is almost finished um i should say yeah four more rows of the cuff for all of these i am following the crazy sock ladies magic oh, vanilla loop vanilla sock on magic loop pattern but i do a couple of variations which i will put on the rubbery pages the first is that i do a two by two cuff instead of a one by one cuff which the pattern calls for and I think the pattern calls for 20 rounds of rib. I think I, all of this information is in her tutorials that you can also look at online. So I'm not giving any information away. Um, I do, for my 2.25 millimeters, I usually do the 20 round rib that the pattern calls for. Because the pattern calls for a 2.25 millimeter. If I'm doing a 2.5 millimeter, I often stop at 15 or 16 rounds. Um, I could do it and have a long cuff, but I also tend to do 40 round leg instead of 50 rounds, which is partly because I don't like super long socks and partly as a bit of a time saver because I do need a lot as presents. And so I just, at the beginning, at the get go, said let's do slightly shorter legs. Um, and also men's socks. They're just so long. The foot is so long, so <laughs> having shorter cuffs, um, shorter legs helps. So that's what I do. This one will be a 20 row, that's 16 at the moment. Um, but the other one that I had just picked up the gusset stitches on, that was a 16 row. Um, but I'm not fussy. If I need an extra row, I need an extra row. I do count on my first sock as I go so that my second sock I can match to my first sock but if I am knitting and I get carried away with the first sock and I end up with 25 row cuff then I have a 25 row cuff and I will knit the second sock to match so I'm not fussy <laughs> but that's what I tend to do is a two by two cuff with oh, you can see so many colors of variation already love it um two by two cuff 16 or 20 rows and the last one which I have cast on that's right so this one is another opal opal yarn it's a good enough yes Hickson. I can't say that word my German is very very limited um this is 25% wool, 25% poly mid or nylon. I'm pretty sure poly mid and nylon are the same. It's just 
English is? I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, this says Polly Um, And for this one, I am very excited. I got some Addy Sock Wonders. So 2.5 millimeter because that tends to be my preferred for socks. Um, and this is very similar to a 9 inch circular. Oh, sorry, the Yarn Fest. It's another grey variegated yarn. Um, this is for someone different than the last one I showed is for. So it doesn't matter that they look very similar. They will work out quite differently, even though the colours are similar. Um, but this is my sock wonder needles. Now, 9 inch circular, actually, let's do a little comparison. So, 9 inch circular versus sock wonder. I think the sock wonder is half an inch or an inch longer. So that is a comparison for size. The nine inch circular, if I can scooch the um, stitches down, have two little needles. The sock wonder has one little and one bigger. So if I put them side by side, The 9 inch circulars are all the same size, so I'm only going to hold one of them up for comparison. But that is the size difference. That one's getting in the way. So you can just see the peak of the red down the bottom. So this is the middle one, is the 9 inch circular, and there's the sock wonder has one that's a little bit smaller and one that is bigger. So I think it's four centimeters and seven centimeters is what the packet says for the sock wonder. Now what that means, I find with nine inch circular, I can do um, continental knitting where you're picking it up and scooping, but I struggle to do my throwing knitting because when I'm throwing I often hold my needle um, between my thumb and finger like that and so I kind of use the needle as an extension of my finger and I often use this gap in here to manipulate the needle as I'm knitting. I can't do that with such a short needle like it's shorter than my finger so it doesn't actually make it Sorry, it doesn't actually make it to this part because it's shorter than my finger is. So this is not working well. Anyway, where I find the sock wonder is just that little bit bigger so I can knit more with my normal style. I still have to change it a little bit and the same with the Addy Flexi Flips is I've had to change the way I hold it slightly to make it work. But you can see there it kind of hits that part of my finger which means I still have a bit more movement and flexibility as I'm knitting. Um, so it's not coming super naturally yet. I expect that it will become more and more natural the more I do it. I've only done a tiny little bit of cuff so it's still very very early days. Um, and I think it was Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady said it usually takes four pairs of socks to get used to a new style. Now, the Flexi Flips, this is the third sock I've tried on it, but it's technically still, when I finish it, it'll be my first sock. This is my first attempt. So, yeah, it's just one of those things that it's not super comfortable yet, but it is more comfortable for me straight away than the 9-inch circulars. And I look forward to seeing what it's like doing the rest of that. So that is all of my whips. Like I said, I got it down to four and then I bumped it up to 11. Crazy. 10. Because, like I said before, two of the socks were a two at a time. So it's only one project. 
Okay, so I, yeah, my projects. Pretty happy with them all. I'm a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of socks I have cast on at the moment, um, which I know I chose to do it and I know why I did it, but it is strange after so long of having fewer projects where I can grab for it and go, I know exactly what I'm doing with this project, to have so many similar projects at slightly different stages that I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be mirroring a heel or if I have to do more cuff or if I can just do some vanilla knitting or if I'm going to be doing magic loop or if I'm going to pick up a bag and it will be sock wonder or <laughs> um, flexi fit, flexi lips. Um, so I think that's a bit strange and once I work through these six, I think I'll go back to having only one or two sock projects on the needles rather than six at a time. Um, but I will also, as we go into further into summer sock camp, I will be doing some patterns. Um, I have three of Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Ladies patterns, which if you do one of her patterns or you use yarn from her shop, you get an extra entry for your finished pair of socks. Um, so I have three patterns of hers that I'm planning to do. Um, so there's two more things, groups of things that I want to take you through today uh, before I say goodbye. The first is acquisitions and the second is yarn dyeing. I had a go at yarn dyeing. This was a Mother's Day present from my family. Uh, they got me some yarn, some undyed yarn, both skeins, 100 gram skeins, and some sock lengths, and I got to dye them. So yeah, I had a lot of fun. If you are interested in that, I did put some stories up on Instagram, and I will go and save them to story highlights, so that if you want to have a look, you can. Uh, but basically, I got some acid dyes and bicarb soda, not bicarb, citric acid, and I got some food dye and citric acid, and I just played. And I did have my son help me with one, and I'll show you which one that was in a minute. Um, we just, I had fun. And I love colour. One of the reasons I like knitting is colour. One of the reasons I love sewing is colour. The reasons I like doing my nails is colour. So dyeing was right in my ball house. Um, wheelhouse? Right in my wheelhouse. Loved it. Um, so I'm going to show you... Actually, you know what, let's do that first. I don't have everything I've dyed here. Um, I didn't go back and check, and I couldn't remember if I had shared some on my previous podcast, but I don't think I had. Um, so I did three lots of dyeing, and the ones I'm going to show you are my last lot of dyeing. Um, I really liked some of the other ones. It's not like these are the best and the other ones are worse. It's just these are the ones that I had out, so I thought I'd show you these ones. And then the other ones I'll show you as I knitted them. Um, so first off, I will show you the sock lengths. So sock lengths are basically just pre-knit things um, that you can then unravel and knit with. And the idea is that you can do all sorts of things with them. You can use them for socks, you can use them for shawls, anything that has four ply you can use them for. But the idea is that you can dye them. If you wanted to do a gradient, it would be much easier to do the gradient along rather than dealing with the skeins. If you want to do self-striping, you could do the same thing. Um, it's very much... I think in some ways it gives you more control if you're wanting blocks of colour or gradients, but it also means you have no idea what the sock's going to look like. Um, because sometimes, I mean, this is a, a tube sock length. Sometimes if it's knit flat, this is knit in the tube. But the, the colour of the yarn changes depending on which part of the tube or which part of the thread gets dyed. Um, you can do different, uh, it's just the sky's limit. Basically you paint it and then you knit it and then you have no idea how the painting is going to, or the dyeing is going to translate to the knitting. So I just had a bit of fun. I did one that was, I did with ice dyeing. So I put ice on top 
I'd pre-soaked it with citric acid, put ice on top, um, sprinkled colour onto the ice and then put it in the oven and it melted in, like the ice melted, the colour dropped on and it set and it is beautiful. But I didn't bring that one with me. This one I did just very rough flowers. I actually used a paintbrush and um, a paintbrush and powder to do this. I didn't use made up paint, it was all powders. And I just went for a very rough look. I wasn't trying to do anything like you look back, you go, oh yeah, flowers, you look close. And it's a complete mess. But I knew that once it's actually knit up, you're not going to see it anyway. It's all about the colours. So I did that. And then on the other side, I had some leftover colours. And so I did a bit of a rainbow gradient with some grey as well to give it some continuity. And so I'm really interested to see how this knits up because you'll have socks that have obviously green, pink, blue and yellow. And then just little bits of other colours popping through to say hi. And it does go down into yellow and pink. Well, pink. Just a tiny little bit of yellow. It's not even the gradient. I just did whatever I had left over from the next one I'm going to show you. Um, and I just blotched it. No pattern, no rhyme reason except for the order of the colour. So that's one. And it's just, it's so weird to look at this and be like, I have no idea what the final socks going to look like. But it just makes it exciting. So the next one, which I did have rhyme and reason for, I love this. So I went to an art shop and I bought some um, sponges and I used those sponges. Anything that I've done with acid dye I will not use with other dyes. Um, so I use those sponges to, sorry, I won't use it like food prep or anything like that, but I use those sponges to do these spots. And it came in four different sizes and I had six different colours. And so I just cycled through them. And the whole thing, it just goes on like that. I had a blast. It was so much fun to do. The other side, I actually just left. So any colour that bled through, I'll get some colour from. Otherwise, it'll end up being mostly grey. I did pre-dye this one in a grey. Um, before I coloured it because I didn't want it to have a white base. Um, and so yeah, looking forward to seeing how this one will knit up as well. Um, yeah, and I'll probably with these, probably, possibly, I might do heel toe and cuff and be able to get two socks, two pairs of socks out of each one. This next one is the one I did with my son. So those same circular sponges on the last one we used in this one and we did with food dye. Um, so he, I put blue food dye and yellow food dye and he just went to town. So you can see most of it does end up green with little bits that are more blue and little bits that are more yellow. Um, I actually don't know which side was the front. We ended up flipping it over and dyeing both sides so that it was quite covered in dye. Um, and you can see there is colour variation there. For the most part, it did mix up and become a fairly constant green. But it's still a lot of fun. And I'm actually going to knit socks for my son out of this. <laughs> I mean, what else could I do? Um, and I might do... I mean, it would be a great, like, cuff and toe colour for something as well. So I have to figure out exactly what I want to do and what I want it to look like. But yeah, it was it was so much fun to knit with uh, to to play with color with him, and I put down like cling film, cling wrap first, so that the counter was protected and it was all food dye, so it wasn't dangerous for him. Um, yeah, it was definitely a good experience. Now these next ones. I love these. So I did this one first. And I was trying to get lighter colours. 
and you know there are definitely lighter colors in there but I wouldn't say it's a pastel sock because I did speckling and the speckling definitely made the whole thing deeper and brighter in color than having a pastel um I mean if I can go like there's definitely pastel bits but overall the effect is still quite a bit of color um but I loved it I basically I dip dyed a pastel pink and then I did some speckling on top and included a little bit of blue just for a bit of contrast bits and blue red purple so much fun and I like it better dry than I did wet when I first finished it I thought maybe it was a bit much now I love it this one I did using a technique that Ken Nitz um, used on one of her tutorials when she was doing the, actually it was a dye along, the April dye along with Peacock. So I didn't have Peacock colours, but I used the same concept of her wave dyeing for that one. And I love it because it ended up with a lot of distinct colours. Um, but still vibrant and beautiful and yeah it's just everything I was hoping that this one would be this one the third one which also has so many beautiful colors and distinct colors and yeah this was my leftover dye one so every time I had powder or dye on my gloves I would just wipe it on here and then a few times this went for while I was doing this as well um, a few times I set it just by putting it in the microwave to try and set some of the colors before I kept going but I did let them mix quite a bit as well and so you actually like they're not identical but you have a lot of similar colors because this one was one that I had done a lot of while I was painting this one. So you've got a lot of the same colours in there. And this is the other one that I did a lot of while I was doing the middle one. Um, so the scraps of these two outside ones are in the middle one. And I keep looking at these thinking maybe I should do a fade. What do you reckon? I don't know what I would do with three skein fade. Oh, actually. I have one of Tennis Fiber Arts's t-shirt patterns, which is designed for fades. Hmm. I might have to have a look and see what I think, because it is, I'm pretty sure, a sock fingering weight fade. And I already have the pattern, because I bought it a while ago thinking I should do that. I don't have many summer clothes that I knit, which makes sense, right? Who wants to wear hand knits in summer but wool is actually pretty good for keeping you warm when you're cold and cold when you're warm it regulates you and so be interested in wearing a light weight light yeah a light weight um t-shirt and i can wear these colors i probably put that down the bottom let's see Miles Cream is on the bottom. But the colour wise, I like the blue better. Anyway, I'll have a look and I will let you know when I, if I, when I cast it on. But yeah, I definitely think I'm going to do something with these three as a fade. So pretty. Alright, so that is all the dyeing I'm going to show you today. I did, I had. 1.9 kilos of yarn that I dyed in maybe two weeks. It's a lot of yarn to knit. I definitely want to keep dyeing. I loved it. I can't knit that quickly. I mean, it's much quicker to dye than to knit. So I need to figure out what my plan would be. Um, I will order more if Stephen West I want to do the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along in October again. I did that last year and loved it. And 
I think I will probably try and dye yarn for myself for that. Um, but other than that, I will get some and play with it, but I just don't know what I'm going to do with it all. Um, because obviously I will dye much quicker than I knit. And I don't want to just have a huge stash growing and sitting there. And I still want the freedom occasionally if I see a different colourway that I like that someone else has made to buy that. I don't want to stop buying yarn from other people either. And so it's just trying to figure out that balance of I don't just want lots and lots of excess. But I have found another hobby that I love. We'll see. Now, this next little bit will have a bit of clutter. Um, these are the rest of my acquisitions, which is actually a fair bit. So, the first one, which actually was the most recent one that I received, but that's okay. This is from Lavichka, which is a local Pesnimperia, I mean, I say local, it's like a two hour driveway, but it's here in Poland. Um, and I'm pretty excited. She included some cute goodies, like a gauge swatch, a pinky note, some personalised fudge, which I kind of can't believe is still here, except that the day I opened it, she included one for me, one for my husband, and one for my son. Um, like she even messaged me to see how many children I had so she could include fudge for them. How sweet is that? And I said, I have two, but one of them I wouldn't give fudge to yet. She's a bit young. So she included three. One for me, one for my son, and one for my husband. Um, but when I got them, I didn't want to give one to my son. I think it was a bit late in the day. So they're still sitting here. But I got from her, she had a sale on 30% off some drops um, yarns. So I got some Drops Kid Silk. Love this colour. Been really wanting to try a um, merino hull double with sock yarn jumper. And I had the sock yarn for it, but I didn't have the merino. Sorry, the mohair. So this is a Super Kid mohair and silk. And I got enough to match the amount of sock yarn that I have. And I will do a jumper for myself out of this. And then the second one that I got, so I got six balls of that, and then this one I got nine balls, is Drop Spell. And this is a 53% cotton, 33% viscose, 14% linen. And I'm planning to make a top for myself, a summer top out of this. Um, yeah, just nice, lightweight, should be pretty cool. And like I said, I don't have any hand knit tops for summer, so I'm pretty excited to try that. So this is Drops Bell Unicolor. This one was Drops Kid Silk. And they actually work all right together, but my hair will be warm. This will be cool. So that is that. I'm very excited to cast them on. And I mentioned before I'd finished a test knit, I'm actually considering doing the same test knit sweater again, but out of this. Like I said, it's so comfortable and it would be so nice. Um, the next one is I actually have, there will be a little bit of crinkling here. I got quite a few things from Hobby again. Now, this was a couple of orders. I have got one of my friends in Poland hooked on knitting. Pun not intended, because hooks are for crochet. She doesn't want to do crochet, she's doing knitting. Anyway, she's hooked on it. She loves it. Um, she's doing a blanket and she's coming up with her own design for the blanket. She's pulling different knitting patterns together into one big blanket. Um, but yes, there was a, a time there where every week she'd be like, so do you need anything else from this shop? Cause I'm going to be ordering something else. I'm like, mm, mm, well, I can say no. So there are a couple of things. This one 
I actually didn't pay for. This was one of the, if you buy enough, you get some free things. So I just got some small stitch markers because, small colourful stitch markers, because I have so many knitting bags that I need more stitch markers for them. I've got some progress keepers, some of the little light bulb progress keepers stitch markers, but look how tiny they are. I wanted, I don't even know if I can do this without, uh, that way, just tiny little stitch markers. Um, I wanted some for when I'm doing colour work or things, um, or patterns that were not were smaller than the light bulb stitch markers. And since I had, these are 4.5 millimeter stitch markers. Um, because I had some rewards in the shop, I got them for free. There are 60 in the box and I'm pretty excited with that. They are very small. This next one is because I was trying to find a good green to do a jumper for myself. Now, this green would work for me. I would wear it, it would be completely fine, but it wasn't quite the green that I was looking for. It's a bit more yellow, I think, than the one I was looking for. Um, so this will end up going in my sea glass sweater as well. And then I got some more embroidery needles, um, sorry, darning needles with the bent tip because Again, sea glass sweater, one of the ways of doing that is with a bent tip. And so I thought I'd get it and give it a go, see if I like it. The, the tip of them, the eye threading part, is actually quite huge. So it would be fine for DK, 10 ply, 12 ply, chunky, no problem. But 4 ply, I'm not sure I would use it for. Um, or at least I would try and see if I liked it, but... I think it said it was a 2.5 millimeter needle head or needle. So it is quite huge. And then I got my sock Addy Flexi Flips from here as well. And I got a gauge marker needle gauge checker thing. Um, and I did that because, oh, crochet and knitting, that's good. I did that because I actually have a few that I've lost to packets for my needles and I wanted to know. And I have some needles I think that were my granddad's that didn't come in a packet when I got them. Um, so I've always been guessing and holding them up compared to the ones that I knew the size and so I just wanted something that was easier. Also gauge the swap square to check that easier too. And then I got Some more sock yarn. I've got four of these in different colourways. Oh, one of them just lost the the cuff. All right. So these are the Hobby brand silly socks. 25% wool, 25, sorry, 75 wool, 25 polyamide. So I got two of them and then I got, this one has some pink in it and then this one reminded me of a Van Gogh style. Maybe not Starry Night, maybe a field. But it just reminded me of a bit of a Van Gogh vibe. And I have people in my life who like Van Gogh. So they were on sale, I believe. Um, so I got some of them, and then this is the main reason. I think I got them so that I get free shipping, but this is the main reason that I put this order in. Look how huge that ball is. Now, I have six of these, and they are all for the same shawl. Okay, let's turn around. They are winter glue. 51% wool, 49% acrylic. Yeah. It's got a four 
graceful, isn't it? Sorry, I, this is not very graceful, but they are the colours for my shawl. Now the shawl I'm going to do with these is Dre Renee Knits. Um, Dre Renee Knits, I believe, called uh, the Night Shift Shawl. And it calls for 50 grams each of six colours of variegated yarn for, I think it's worsted tempi, um, which is what this is. But it is quite an expensive yarn that it was made with. Like I think 50 grams was $50 US. And I wasn't going to pay that for a shawl when you needed six of them. So instead I found these on Hobby. Again, they were on sale. I think I got them 45% off. And the colours were similar. The variegation in the colours were similar. And it is 49% acrylic, not 100% wool. But I figured for a shawl, I was happy to do that. Um, slightly scratchy, but again, for a shawl, I don't think I'll notice. And I will have so much left over, so I will probably end up doing a jumper or two, maybe stripey for the kids. I don't know, like I could split it into two colorways and give you two, do two different jumpers. Um, anyway, whatever I'll end up doing, I'll have heaps of yarn left over from it. But I did decide to do it this way and have leftover yarn because even with all that leftover yarn, it was cheaper than to just get enough to do the shawl. And finally, I did manage to get another of these pins, which will be a gift. And I've been looking for tape measures for my knitting bags. And I found this. It was um, three zwatty, so about one Australian dollar from just one of those cheap junk shop type places um, in the knitting section. So anyway, I got it. It doesn't, I don't actually know how long it goes, but anyway, it is cute. It will fit in my bags. Great. So I'll go back and get a few more when I'm there next. That is all. Wow, if you're stuck with me this long, thank you. Um, the, I should say the, um, night shift shawl, I'm going to actually join a knit along to do this. I had the yarn already. I've been looking at the pattern. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. I've been looking at the pattern for months, like maybe eight months. I've wanted to do this shawl. And I've been looking for the yarn. And so the fact that I finally found some yarn that I was happy with is huge. Um, I will knit the pattern. Um, see, I just want to jump out of that. Anyway, I will knit it. But I have the yarn. I have the needles. And I just haven't cast on because I've been doing sock knitting and test knitting and other knitting. But I saw today on Instagram, um, love it, the, the people I bought this from, these beautiful yarns, are doing the same pattern. And she's going to do a little mini impromptu knit along. So I thought, why not knit along with some friends? So during summer sock camp, I will be doing socks, I will be doing shawls, I will probably be doing jumpers. I'm not just going to stick to socks. But that's okay. I like knitting. Um, yeah, I don't have any other yarn to dye at the moment. That's all dyed. So knitting time. Um, yeah, that's it. So thanks for coming and joining me and looking at all of my knitting progress. I'd love to know what you are knitting. So comment down below and tell me what you're knitting. Um, 
if you're on Instagram, let me know so I can pop over to Instagram as well and see what you're knitting. Um, I didn't mention it today, but the reason I started this podcast is because I've recently moved across the world and I don't have many knitting friends nearby. And so I thought, let's start a podcast where I can share what I'm knitting and what I'm learning about knitting and get to know some other people as well. So thanks for coming. Thanks for joining in and have a great day. I will see you later. Bye.